All right, you crazy kids. Today, our lecture is on defining acids and bases, and we're going to be defining them two different ways. We're going to use the Arrhenius method and the bronston lowry method. So let's start off with the Arrhenius method. So according to Arrhenius, he came up with an idea for an Arrhenius acid and an Arrhenius base. And he said the Arrhenius acid is something that's just going to increase the concentration of hydrogen ions. An Arrhenius base is something that increases the concentration of hydroxide ions. Whoa, that was a crazy bracket. Let's try that again. And I'm using these brackets in place of molarity. All right, so when you see a bracket like that, what they're really talking about is molarity, which is how we measure concentration in chemistry. Be wary about this little H plus thing right here. I've made this a point, but I'm going to say it again and again and again. An H plus equals a hydronium ion, which is the same thing as saying a proton. These are all the same. Okay, so please don't be confused when I mention those interchangeably or when I interchange those definitions. All right, now let's take a look at some examples and figure out whether or not we have an Arrhenius acid and Arrhenius base. So our first one, we have HNO3, nitric acid, which is a strong acid, one of those seven I mentioned to you before. I put it in water, and it looks like I create hydronium ions. Oh, so that's going to meet the definition for an Arrhenius acid. Let's use a different color. All right, because I'm producing these as a product, that means I can define HNO3 as an Arrhenius acid. And you might say, well, how do you know that's going to happen? What happens if I, you know, just gave you HNO3 and I'm expecting you to figure out whether or not that's going to be actually occurring? So we we'll look at HNO3. All right. I know it's a strong acid, which means it dissociates. So it's going to break into ions. And here are the ions it breaks into. This ion right here, very, very common for it to combine with water. And when it combines with water, I get a product of H3O+. All right, that's just something you need to memorize. The fact that I'm producing H pluses, which are hydrogen ions, in water means they will turn into hydronium ions. It's what it happens. Just put that one in your brain, put it in your pocket, remember it for later. That's what you're going to see. Our next example is NaOH in water. And looking at it right away, it looks like it produces hydroxides. All right, so if you know, it's producing hydroxides, that's a meeting the definition for an Arrhenius base. Now let's think about what actually occurs. So I have, oops, NaNO3. Nope, it's NaOH. Good golly, Rich. NaOH, all right, that's one of the, you know, the strong bases I've mentioned to you before, so it's going to break into ions. What ions does it break into? All right, NaNOH negative. Oh, there's that OH negative. All right, so I'm producing hydroxides, which meets this definition for an Arrhenius base. That's how I know it's real. Our last one. Ooh, I don't technically see, like, a hydrogen or a hydroxide to start off with. So this one's a little bit trickier, and I'm putting it in water. Now I can look at the products, and the products is telling me that this is going to meet the definition for an Arrhenius base, but we've got to figure out why. All right, so it looks like I'm producing hydroxides. Uh, it means the concentration of hydroxides is going up. This is an Arrhenius base. That's great, but why does it actually happen? All right, so NH3, let's look at it a little bit deeper. If I look at it, it kind of looks like this. All right, so this side's positive, this side's negative, and I put it in water. I'm going to draw a water like this for a change. We all know what it is. So there's my dead frog. I have positives and negatives, positives and negatives. What can happen here, because of all this hydrogen bonding, NH3 is pretty polar. You can look at it, and you're like, wow, that, that's actually be a pretty pretty decent clip. I have three stances of hydrogen bonding. Water only has two stances. Because it is very polar, you can actually steal one of these hydrogens, or hydrogen ions, or a proton, away from water. What's happening, then, is I have my products as an OH negative here and an NH4 positive here. This is also very, very common. This is one of those things you just have to memorize. You put ammonia in water, you're going to get ammonium and a hydroxide. That makes ammonia an Arrhenius base. That's one definition. Another definition is called the bronson lowry acid and bronson lowry base. This one's a little bit easier to see what's going on, and we're going to practice with it more. So bronson lowry acid, by definition, all it's doing is pitching... We'll talk about why I said that, or donating a proton. And the brass alloy base is catching or accepting that proton. 
So this is like a pitcher and a catcher. If I were to draw it out, I would have my Bronson and Lowry acid here sitting on the mound, and I would have my Bronson and Lowry base behind home plate. The ball would be the proton. And what's happening is that Bronson and Lowry acid is pitching or donating the proton, and the Bronson and Lowry base is accepting or catching that proton. So it's like a pitcher and a catcher. So Bronson and Lowry acid is like a pitcher, and Bronson and Lowry base is like a catcher. That's how I like to view it. And let's like, take a look at these. All right, so here we have HCl rectin with NH3. So I need to define these, and these are only going to be your reactants, as either Bronson Lowry acid or Bronson Lowry base. What could happen here? Well, previously I said that NH3 has the ability to kind of grab a proton, and HCl is a strong acid has the ability to donate a proton. All right, so a proton from here is going to go over there. For my products, that means I'm left with a Cl negative and an NH4 positive. That would define HCl as a bronston lowry acid, a BLA. NH3, therefore, would be a bronston lowry base, a BLB. That's how that works. Let's take a look at the next example. All right, all right, here's this NH3 thing I've before. SS already said, okay, NH3 has the ability to capture or grab onto a hydrogen ion, and that hydrogen ion is going to be produced by this water, H2O. Okay, so I'm going to guess that this H2O is going to throw a proton at NH3. That would leave me with an OH negative and an NH4 positive. I don't want you to memorize that it's always the first thing that donates it. I could, you know, just switch the my reactants around. So don't don't feel like that's the case. But you kind of have to look at what's there and what could happen. If that's what could happen there, then H2O turns into my Bronson Lowry acid. It's the donator, the pitcher, and NH3 turns into my Bronson Lowry base. It's the catcher. Let's say you didn't really agree with that. And you said, well, Estes, that's impossible to predict. You know, how do I possibly know that that's the case and it doesn't go in the other direction? Well, if I did it in the other direction, let's see if this is anything familiar. If I said, all right, let's pretend like this is how my proton is going to be donated. That would leave me with H3O+. I've seen that before, but it would also leave me with NH2 negative. Have I ever seen that before? Is that a polyatomic ion that's on my chart? No. It's not. That's not something you're familiar with. Therefore, this doesn't make any sense. However, if we look at this example one more time, all of these things make sense, or all these things you're familiar with. I've seen NH4 before. That's ammonium. That's on my polyatomic ion chart. I've seen OH negative before. That's hydroxide. That's on my polyatomic ion chart. So those make more sense than something you've never seen before. So try to keep with things that are familiar to you when you're trying to predict your products on these. We have one more kind of definition here, and I've written it out for you. It says the conjugate acid is the species that remains after bronson lowry base gains a proton, and the conjugate base is the species that remains after bronson lowry acid gives up a proton. Now, I get that those, those definitions are a little bit tricky, so I'm going to simplify it for you. All right, the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. The conjugate acid used to be the bronson lowry base, and the conjugate base used to be the Bronson Lowry acid. So the Bronson Lowry acid, after it gives up a proton, turns into the conjugate base. And the Bronson Lowry base, after it accepts that proton, turns into the conjugate acid. Let's take a look. So here we have an example. We're going to duplicate this. We're going to throw it over here and see if we can define these other terms. So HCl was my bronson lowry acid. It turned into Cl negative. Its new term over here, therefore, is a conjugate base. My bronson lowry acid turned into my conjugate base, and that's called linking your pairs, which I'm going to require you to do. Let's take a look at the other thing. My bronson lowry base turned into NH4 positive. Therefore, NH4 positive is now called the conjugate acid and I'm going to link these pairs. Now I can clearly see what happened. All right? HCl turned into Cl negative. 
HCl we defined as Bronson Lehrer acid. It's now called a conjugate base. So on my reactant side, I have Bronson Lehrer acid, Bronson Lehrer base. And on my product side, I have conjugate acid, conjugate base. It's how they change. So after the donation of that proton, we have a new term or new name for that species in the reaction. This helps us identify or label all the species in my reaction. Let's do one more example. We'll just leave it up here, I guess. Why not? All right, so H2O. Here it is. It was a bronson lowry acid. It turned into OH negative. All right, so after it lost that proton, H2O no longer has two hydrogens. It only has one and now a negative charge. So my bronson lowry acid is now called a conjugate base. NH3, after it accepts that proton, well, let's make it green, it turns into NH4. Therefore, the bronson lowry base now is called the conjugate acid. All right. Last thing I want to mention are amphoteric species, so things that can act as an acid or a base. Here's two more examples. We're going to label these as a bronson lowry acid, bronson lowry base pair, and conjugate acid, conjugate base pair. And then we're going to talk about how one thing can actually basically be a switch hitter. It can sometimes be a bronson lowry acid and sometimes be a bronson lowry base. H2SO4, I already know that's an acid because it's one of the seven strong acids I mentioned to you. Therefore, it's going to be donating a proton. It's going to take this proton, and it's going to throw it in this direction. On my other side of my reaction, therefore, I would have HSO4 negative. It's lost that one proton, and I would have H3O positive. It's gained that proton. Let's define them. If this thing loses a proton or donates a proton, that's my bronson lowry acid, BLA. The thing it turns into is called the conjugate base. I'm going to link these pairs. That's what a linked pair looks like. H2O, we'll use a different color. Blue, why not? This thing is the thing that's accepting the proton. It's a bronson lowry base. On the other side of the equation, after it accepts that proton, it turns into H3O positive. Therefore, that's labeled as a conjugate acid. I'm going to link these pairs now I can see how they've changed over time. So in that case, water is a bronson lowry base. Let's look at the atoms in the next example. I'm guessing it's going to change. We'll find out together. So we have NH3 and H2O. Okay, I've seen this example now like four times, so probably should just memorize it. This is what can occur. In this case, I can have a hydrogen here from water being stolen away by NH3. I know that's a possibility. NH3, therefore, is going to change or turn into NH4 positive, and I'm going to be left with OH negative. All right. Well, I'm going to color code this just so it all is the same color. This was a H positive like that. That's how it looked. All right. Now, let's start labeling terms or labeling species. H2O in this case was a donator, so that's a bronson lowry acid, and it turned into OH negative, so that's my conjugate base. I'm going to link those terms. I circle them, I link them. The other part, I have NH3. That was the acceptor. That was the catcher that took the proton away from uh, H2O. Therefore, it is a bronson lowry base as a reactant. As a product, it turns into NH4. And therefore, that is a conjugate acid. I'm going to link those. I do like this. I do like this. And I link those two things together. Now I can follow what actually occurs and how they've changed over time. All right, team, that's your lecture for today. Hope you enjoyed it.